Welcome into this edition of Inside Bronkbuster Athletics. I'm Mike Pilosov. This week, we bring in, I always consider him a special guest, Mike Scoop Harding, who is the assistant men's basketball coach and now the director of the Super Circuit. So we appreciate you coming on. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It's interesting when you look at your background and your story because you spent really a decade working at KU. You know you're a big Jayhawk guy, yeah. Lawrence guy. You were an assistant coach for a very successful high school basketball program. So I guess most people would ask, why leave the job security of that to come coach junior college basketball? Uh, it's always been a dream of mine, uh, me and my best friend, uh, Seth Norwood, who passed away 10 years ago. But it's always been a big dream of ours <clears throat> to coach at the college level. Um, and the opportunity presented itself, and I, I figured it was time to jump, make that jump and give it a try. And I'm very excited and happy with the choice that I made. And was it everything you envisioned? You played in this conference, so maybe it wasn't a surprise, but it, what was it what you envisioned? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, the grind, you know, uh, the off-season grind, the workouts, uh, you know, the going to class, you know, when you're tired and sore, all of that stuff. If people didn't follow Danny Manning's career, they'd probably have no idea that you were high school teammates with him. His dad was an assistant at KU, so he moved to Lawrence for his senior year. What was it like playing with him and and how often do you guys talk? I know you reached out to him last week. Right, yeah, we, uh, his dad came and uh, brought Danny with him uh, for his senior year at Lawrence High. That was my sophomore year. Um, I got moved up to play JV, so we were the, the whipping boys for the varsity at that time. And I always laugh because it was me at the top of a press you know we're pressing them and here is Danny coming at 6'10 coming handling the ball like a guard so um, Danny's always been a you know good friend of mine you know his family know his family well um, we, we don't talk a lot um, we usually text every now and then you know say hello you know on birthdays or something like that but did reach out to him a little bit uh, asking you know some big guy tips you know to work with the big with our bigs um, you know, he's always willing to help, always has been willing to help with that stuff. We know the story of Danny and the Miracles from when they won the national championship, but you got to see him at the high school level. What kind of a player was Danny Manning prep before the college years? Uh, he was everything. I mean, he could do it all. You know, he, uh, he could handle the ball, pass the ball, um, off the court, you know, just a, you know, awesome teammate, you know, awesome guy, good friend, you know, just, you know, happy-go-lucky, you know like to have fun, but you know, when it's on the court, you know, definitely serious. Last year was kind of a blur, and that was just for me. For you, you came here, you were the assistant men's basketball coach. Well, that never changed, but other things were added to your plate. You became, in the middle of the women's basketball season, you took over the women's program, and then really a few weeks after that, they called you in the office and said, hey, we need you to, to help coach track as well. What did you learn about yourself from juggling all those jobs. And by the way, you helped me out with game day <laughs> operations and all that. Yeah, um, that's just always been me. I've always been a team player, you know, willing to help out, you know. Um, track, I, you know, never ran track, never, you know, worked with track, but, you know, just whatever I could do to help, you know, help the coach out, you know, be that assistant coach at track. And even if it's something as little as, you know, getting the team to get something to eat, you know, something like that to help out. That's just always been me. You know, when I asked you if you envisioned what the junior college ranks would be becoming an assistant coach, did you ever envision what happened last year would happen where they would call upon you in the middle of a basketball season to take over a program? Right, not in a million years. Yeah, that was a shock. Um, it gave me a chance to see if I wanted to be you know, a head coach at the college level, because I've, I've always had that envision of wanting to be just an assistant coach, you know, to get into the recruiting, the scouting, you know, that part of it, helping run practices. Uh, never really envisioned wanting to be a head coach, but I think it was a good shot, you know, a good try. Um, I, I had a blast at it, learned some things. You know, I got, you know, I can still learn a lot of stuff. Um, had a blast doing it and, uh, you know, definitely just, liked and enjoyed, had a blast. I pulled you to the side at one point during the season last year and I asked you, are you going to put in for the full-time position? You told me, you said, Mike, I don't think I'm ready at that point. Mm -hmm. Do you envision yourself, do you see yourself 
as a as a head coach someday? Is that what you want to do? I know you've coached at the high school right, levels. Right. Do you see yourself as a college coach? Not not really. I, I like I said, I want to just I want to stay at that assistant coaching at that spot. Um, I don't think I'm ready to be a head coach. Um, never really envisioned being a head coach at the college level. I had a blast being a head coach at the high school level. Um, you know, it's more teaching the game and, you know, learning the X's and O's, you know, getting them to learn the X and the X's and O's, but no really interest in being a head coach at the college level. How much has this conference changed? Because you played at Butler since you played mm -hmm. and, and the gyms really haven't changed, I don't think, no. but, but how much has the conference at the competition level now that you're coaching, how much has that changed? The size, the size of the guards. I mean, you, you, you can, you could, you know, have a six, three or six, four point guard at times, or, um, you know, the, the muscular size of the guys has changed a bunch. Um, of course the speed and the, you know, the, the agility and all that stuff still there. But with me, mostly it's just the size. Coach Nee was let go following last season. What was that time like for you? I know Silas Mills, obviously, who's no longer here. It, it was an uncertain time. And, and I can't imagine that because I've never been a coach. Right. But because you were on that staff, take us through those few weeks once you found out and what's going through your mind. It was tough. It was tough because, you know, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Coach Nee. Um, coach Mills taught me a lot of stuff, too. Um, I enjoyed working with those two you know, a bunch. So, you know, it was, it was, it was tough on me. I'm not going to lie. It was, it was pretty tough. Um, but I'm, you know, just ready to roll. Um, their, their careers are going to go. They'll be fine. Um, I just, you know, like I said, I just enjoyed, you know, working under them, sponging off of them, learning and stuff. Um, still talk to Coach Nee and text with them, you know, a little bit every now and then and check up on him, see how he's doing. So, when it comes down to positions, and I, I call you the positionless person because you do so much, we're, we're very fortunate to have you here. Now this year, and we, we said this in the intro, that you're now the director of the Super Circuit. You're in charge of a place where you worked really part-time mm -hmm. last year. So what does that job entail, and how did that come about? Greg uh, McVeigh had mentioned, you know, that they wanted to keep me around here, you know, if I'm not coaching basketball. Um, that made me feel real good, made me feel wanted, you know, um, I've always felt wanted ever since I've stepped foot on campus. With the Super Circuit, I'm going to be working next to uh, Great House, Great Great House uh, a lot, uh, trying to sponge off of him and get all of his 30-plus his years here. He knows everything. He does. He really does. Um, going to work that, you know, just, uh, you know, make sure that it's, a, you know, a good place to come work out, get a workout in for, you know, people in the community students and everything. I'm also going to be with the intramurals and everything and all that stuff. So it's going to be new for me, but I, you know, I'm, I think I'm ready for the challenge. So are you going to play too? Cause since you're in charge of the intramurals? Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to try to get out there and run and play. And I always like it when, when the kids overlook me and think they, they, they nickname me old school. So I like to, I like for them to think that, and then I'll give them a few buckets and then I'll show them. They don't know about the college basketball scoop harding which i didn't really even know it until you had sent me a video <laughs> and just watching that it's like man are you going to show that video to your players now because man they, they think scoop can't jump he can absolutely yeah yeah i sent it to him actually just last week uh sent that video to him and they enjoyed it and had a blast with it but i always told him i, I had a little hops in my body um started in high school you know, with the Duncan and all of that stuff. But it, Spud Webb was my guy, you know, because we were about close to the same height. He's a little shorter than me, but still just the way that he got up, just I've always liked that. He, he could definitely get up. There's mm -hmm. no question about that. Uh, I know you're a big family guy. You, you hang out with your kids um, and your son's got a birthday. Yep. His birthday is tomorrow. Um, happy birthday, little guy. Um, going to go try to go see him, hang out with him for a few days and then get back to this grind. Speaking of the grind, there was a hiatus, you know, everything was shut down for a few months. So you went back to Lawrence and it seemed like you picked, got the, uh, the bike out of mothballs and you were riding all over Lawrence. Why? What, what I guess, inspired you to, to go back to, to riding? Uh, it's just relaxing. Um, I put on my headphones and I always tell everyone I put on my Run DMC and LL Cool J and I just, you know, I can ride for a long time. Um, 
started getting longer and longer. Um, then I found out, you know, the nice bike routes that they had, I didn't even know they had in Lawrence. Um, next thing you know, I'm riding for, you know, a good hour and a half, two hours and having a blast. Lastly, you are now working with a new staff because you're still the assistant men's basketball coach. So you've got Cole Dewey in there, you've got Zach Toll. What's it been like interacting with, with those, go, those guys? Because a lot of people will tell you that, that Cole Dewey is one of the up-and-comers in this business. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we got a chance to sit down. He invited me over to his house and we had a barbecue and ate and we, just him and I just got to sit there and talk. And, he, you know, just listening to him talk and listening to Coach Z talk, they're, they're locked in. Um, and like you say, he is one of the upcoming coaches. Um, found out some things too. My, the assistant coach that recruited me to Georgia Southern was at Cole's wedding. He knows him real well. So we know a lot of, you know, a few of the same people. Um, Cole told me that he did his homework on me and contacted a lot of people about me and never heard one negative thing about me. So that made me feel good. But his, his dedication, he's, he's, he's locked in and Coach Z is locked in and I'm ready to just sponge off of them. It's kind of weird me being, you know, 52 years old, sponging off of the younger guys, but these guys got the knowledge and I, I'm excited. Appreciate you coming on. No problem. Thanks for having me.